Hello everyone, I have a, a couple of matches for you today. My first match today is in the New Orleans here. Um, I'll be Basically today is a cruiser type of deal. I'll be going over two cruisers at tier 8 that I've quite enjoyed for a while now. Uh, this is the New Orleans and I have the... Uh, I believe this was the anniversary camo that they gave out to the Kiev, Charles Martel, and Monarch and some other ships if you did the collection. So uh, we are here with some clan mates, and they will be supporting me on the eastern flank today. Yeah, uh, the the difference between the New Orleans and the Pensacola is that it's much more agile. The guns are in a normal setup, two front, one aft. Uh, the radar is also pretty useful compared to the Pensacola, which did not have radar. So this is where we start seeing that meta for the heavy cruisers in the American line developing. They're not the most uh, tanky ships, but the New Orleans is probably the tankiest cruiser at tier 8, from my experience, apart from the Atago who is right next to me, since it does have a heal. So today we'll be hopefully helping our Kiev in the front over there and our Atago, uh, hunting destroyers. There's not an abundance of destroyers, but there's enough there to be able to stop their push into our team. And so we're just making our way right now basically to an engagement here. And we should be opening up on some enemies here soon. Yes. Uh, there's a there's a Sean horse. There's a Mogami. So I'm firing HE at these distances still because the AP is amazing on the New Orleans, but even at that distance, I have a hard time getting an AP shot, and I wasn't sure which way he was going forward or backwards. He was actually going backwards, which is why I missed, or he was slowing down and started to turn backwards. So right now, we still... You want to remain a, a, around islands with most of your cruisers when there's battleships. Uh, we are top tier though in this case, so that gives me just a little bit of leeway, but not a lot because it's you know you can still be really easily deleted by battleships. I pop my defensive fire to help our Kaga. We do have a Kaga on our side uh, with the fighter here and his torpedoes, and we do nick a couple of planes, so that's useful and it also helps us remain in concealment, which is another big plus for the new the New Orleans. It's it's just one of the stealthiest cruisers at tier 8, which is nice. Uh, they did that for the Pensacola as well. They they gave it stealth in a couple patches ago. So you can use that to your advantage. There are torpedoes coming, so I want to turn in to not be able to help or to take them. I'm trying to go help our, our Kiev here, our clan mate, our division mate, uh, with our radar so we can help. But he's in a lot of trouble, I would say. I think he held off too long on his smoke screen, um, so I believe he will go down. But that's not a problem. You know, we can still do well uh, even if we have our Kiev down. I I do pop radar to help help him so he can fire on the Lo Yang, uh, who is in that smoke screen. But uh, he didn't slow down to remain in the smoke screen of his own so he will be taken out here soon by the aircraft carrier I believe on the enemy team who I think is a ranger no no but that's a huge you that has to be a huge you based on the torpedo bombers and fighters that he's had above me um, this I, I just the angles of on on the firing angles for the guns on the New Orleans are amazing by the way both going forward and backwards with that third turret um, I can't fire on anything right now. I can't see anything that I can engage in a scenario where I would end up on top. So I decide to disengage and kite away uh, and to try to stealth up, which does happen. There is a North Carolina coming, so I did not want to be... That is, you know, big guns, nine guns, and very accurate guns. I could easily be deleted by the North Carolina. So I do fire a shot on him, and I do set him on fire, but I believe he does repair it. Oh no, okay, he's still burning. And I turn my attention to this Mogami. The turret traverse on the New Orleans isn't the best. I, but uh, she's very agile. I'll, I'll show later in the 
in the video where uh, what I use on both the cruisers that I am, I am showcasing today. So I do try to engage the Mogami. The Mogami does have pretty good concealments as well. So he also has an advantage of his guns not being as floaty as mine, even though the New Orleans doesn't really have that many floaty shells. But yes, he's also um, very maneuverable on his own. So I keep firing at him. To, he he tries to disengage because you know if it's a one-on-one -on -one fight, I would probably come up on top. The Mogami is not the most uh, tanky cruiser in my opinion at tier eight. She does depend a lot on basically not being fired upon. So now we're concealed entirely. Our clanmate there as well decided to go and engage the North Carolina. I didn't agree with that, but. It's okay, you know, to each his own. He, I believe he gets stuck on it. I think he's stuck on an island right now. Oh, no. And he takes a torpedo backing off the island. He was stuck on the island. So that's that's unfortunate. And I believe he will also go down to the North Carolina. So we lose both our division mates really early on. Maybe I'm playing too passive, but I think the best idea for this ship is to play really passive in general uh, being too out in the open and being focused upon even though it might be one of the best cruisers at your eight is never a good idea on pretty much any cruiser to be honest except maybe like the Moskwa you can still take some damage there not from the Yamato though but that's tier 10 so here we are engaging again uh, Sean Horst and the Fuso the Fuso I know the Fuso isn't pronounced like that the Japanese pronounced the F's that we see in their romanization of their language um, very differently, but that's what most people know it as. Um, we do get our the Mahan from... He was on the other flank, and he decided to join us here, which does help me open up on this Sharnhorst, and he also gets a magnificent drop on that Sharnhorst. I don't know what he was doing. Normally, you always want to turn into where you see the source of torpedoes, but if he's already gone past you, don't do this, you know, I, I really don't 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 know, don't know what that Sharn horse was doing at all. So he falls down, you know, he, he he sinks essentially, and we will help with that as much as we can. He fires upon me, but like I said, this is one of the most agile cruisers that tier eight. He, I try to tempt, I basically bait most cruisers or most battleships to shoot at my broadside, that's why I'm angled the way I am, and when they shoot at me, I turn hard to the left, hard to port, and usually that helps a lot in them misleading the shot, thinking that I would turn some other way, or them just trying to aim normally where they should shoot for my broadside. And then um, the Mogami who's been peppering me all the time, and he's been stealth up, shows up, and I am more than happy to take him out. So, we're uh, well. He'll go. He goes on spotted now. We're in a good position. Where, you know, I always try to engage one target at a time. The Sean horse that was trying to, you know, engage him. Uh, but then I got spotted by that Mogami, and he started firing upon me. Um, if you see, I always set up near an island that I can quickly go forward or backwards into. You never want to have no way of escape essentially when you're being shot at if you set up in a position where you cannot escape in a cruiser you will most likely always get focused down really quickly because everything wants to aim at you because you cannot escape basically you're setting up for failure and you never want to do that in this game it they you get punished really hard for it and usually when you want to carry a game especially if you're top tier like I am you definitely don't want to die too early on in the match. So I keep firing at this Mogami. He keeps he's going backwards and he keeps changing his course. So I chain fire instead. Um, I'm doing minimal damage, which is you know a pain in the butt. He is being a pain in the butt. I switch to AP because he shows a big broadside, but I believe he angles in afterwards, so this might not actually work. I do a big chunk with HE. 
still going backwards and he I, he notices when I switch to AP so he always tries to angle in and he shoots me back so I, m I miss my salvo completely because he, he knows that my AP would devastate him with the citadels okay so I keep firing on him the Mahan is going around trying to do some torpedo drops as well as keep everything spotted I still want to get this guy dead because his rate of fire, I believe he has the 155 millimeter guns on there. Yeah, with that rate of fire, it's the 155s. He is a big threat to me because he can just pepper me with HE and he's a very accurate cruiser because most Japanese cruisers are because they have pretty fast uh, muscle velocity on their guns. So if he dies, the better for us. I do get Citadel. Uh, from behind from the North Carolina I stayed too passive for too long not moving which is also a bad idea to do I do notice my mistake so I start moving thankfully it was only one I don't think it was actually a citadel I think it was just like four or five shells landing perfectly on the deck armor it could have been a citadel I, I can't confirm he is firing on our destroyer I believe now but something is still looking at me Our flank on the western side has fallen entirely, which is really not good for us. Uh, I'm, the carrier has been doing a pretty good job, but we're down on ships. So this is, you know, it's a dilemma. You want to carry your team. The North Carolina has been constantly been peppered by pretty much everyone. Uh, I think that was the Fuso shooting at me, so now we know who's still aiming at us. I keep going in the general direction of the western flank because there's enough ships there to hold them up and there go down goes the um, the North Carolina to torpedoes uh, so I, I want to reinforce this on uh, uh, the western flank because there are ships over here if they push in and we're not prepared for them this is a bad situation for us so um, I moved in that direction but I saw that Maybe I should help the Mahan because I would abandon him too early on. And also our battleship is moving in that general direction, our King George V. So I wasn't about to be left alone on the other flank by myself. So you always want to be... This is one of the best support cruisers there is in the game. You always want to keep moving with your team as well as much as you can. I do recognize that I am located, so that means there is probably a destroyer on the western flank that I am the closest to. Um... Since there's nothing really for me to shoot at or in range of me, I decide to shoot at this Charles Martel who was on my uh, on the western flank, like I said, which I did want to cover. Uh, he's, he's got more health than I do, but my AP does do a shit ton of damage. Uh, it's literally one of the best AP ships in the game. And then he gets smoked up, which confers my suspicion that there was a destroyer over here. I'm not, you know, I have radar, so it's not an issue for me. I switched to HE because... I get detected, which means it's not the Charles Martel. It is the cruise. It's the um, the destroyer spotting me, which means that I'll probably be shooting at a destroyer soon. If had I kept AP loaded, it would have helped me out in the end. But it still does damage even to the broadside armor, so or broadside target rather. I asked the CV if he can spot. I believe at this point, or I had asked before. He does have a fighter over here. I don't know why the Charles Martel came to a stop and is backing up. I think he's being spotted by the uh, by the carrier because he's behind the smoke screen. I pop my radar because I'm curious to know where that destroyer has gone if he's setting up for a torpedo run for me. And if you notice, I did take out his rudder on that Charles Martel and I incapacitated something else in that last salvo where I hit a citadel, which most likely means I probably took out his engine. Okay, so my radar does spot him at the end of the cycle, so I don't get to do much damage to him. I do fire a blind salvo over there, right before my, yeah. So the radar runs out, and he's still spotted. And I try to keep this island between me and the Charles Martel, so there's nothing that will bother me while I'm trying to kill the destroyer. But I was going too fast, so I couldn't stop in time. So I still have... A shot on the Charles Martel so I decide to fire on him he's completely stationary because I took out his engine and his rudder so it's really just farming citadels here 
I remain angled because the AP on the Charles Martel is also pretty great, as I'll show you in the next match that I have. And this level should be the killing level, yes. There's some lag I had during the match that shows up in the replay. I wish it wouldn't, but that's how the files get reported. The carrier, enemy carrier, tries to drop me while I'm backing up and just, you know, on an island. But the New Orleans has some of the best AA at tier 8 in a cruiser. And I quickly shoot down the tier 7 planes. The Mogami that we got down really low earlier shows up on the other flank as well because he was going to support this flank and this destroyer. And I have a hard time killing him because he just, my salvos just do whatever they want to do. I am on low health as well. Uh, there are torpedoes coming and I turn into them. I I don't know why. I, I saw them earlier, but the torpedo warnings didn't show up in time. But um, it's not an issue. It's agile enough to dodge torpedoes and they run out before they even get to me anyway. So um, the destroyer was killed by the Kaga. The Kaga is a great player. He's a rank one player just like myself. So he knows what to focus on. And we've turned this around essentially. I killed a full health cruiser, you know, with the little health that I have. Um, I stopped the gate from pushing in because had I not been there, the gate would have gone for our cap, which is important. That gave the Kaga information where to go, you know, for his next strike. Um, actually, I believe the gate on the enemy team was tier six. You know, he's low. He's not the highest tier here. He's he's been up tier. Um, complains in the chat, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I finally can kill the Mogami who's been avoiding my shells or I don't know maybe RNG just hated me and I am headed down to the cap on the enemy side uh, since there is nothing literally to kill here um, the Lo Yang was spotted last time over here but he was also on the other side that's the friend you know my Kiev got killed basically as a result of that Lo Yang and, but he last was spotted turning around. The CV is probably trying to spot wherever he is. The Fuso is on the other side. He's the last remaining one. It's a Fuso. It shouldn't last long. And so we're just going to make our way to the cap and try to cap them out. Um, if there, if anything does pop up, we, I believe... Did we have an Amagi that was AFK the entire time? I believe we did. So, okay, so the carrier tells me that the DD is inside their own cap. And um, I'm going to show you a neat trick here to... I, I forgot that with the mod I had on the minimap, it will tell me the... It will tell me the... Sorry, that was my dog. It will tell me the distance of the radar on the actual minimap, but I don't have it enabled even though I could have enabled it. Um, I see the, the smoke screen that the DD is in, and I was fired upon by someone, friendly probably. And so I move closer to the smoke screen. If you don't have the mini mod or the 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 mini map mod, you can enable, or you can do this on your own. Either way, the next patch will have it, so you can enable the distance, the, your radar circumference on the map as well. Your the circle that will tell you how far away your your ra uh, radar will go out to or hydro. As you can see, I'm having some <laughs> server lag here while I was in the game. It shows up in the replay. So there's a smoke screen right there. I can use my concealment as a base because my concealment's 9.1. My radar is 9 point something as well, 9 kilometer actually. So it's 100 meters difference from that little circle that you see there of my concealment. But there's also another thing you can do, which I should do here. I should try to zoom in and... I think I did already do it. I zoomed in and saw the distance. Yeah, okay. And, yeah. So, uh, he's on low health. And he gets radared and he starts moving. So, I miss my first salvo. I shoot my other salvo. I miss that one because he angled away. I should be able to get him with this one. And, like I said, I was having some lag here. So, I kill him before I actually kill him. And that's the end of the match. So... This is a scorecard. I do 94k, 3 kills, 9 planes, 2000 XP. We carried the team essentially. That's basically what you do as a support cruiser. You try to help your own team win. So, our next match here is in the Charles Martel. I forgot that I had the premium, uh, not the premium camo, but the camo they gave us during the anniversary collection thing going on. 
uh, and I was using a different camo until later that I realized I forgot that Charles Martel got one. So it was not really anything to worry about. But Charles Martel, great cruiser. Um, I can do 40 knots with speed boost on it, and um, it's just amazing. Its AP is amazing. Its HE is great. Long range. It's got some torpedoes just in case. That's just versatility. It comes to help. Its AA isn't too bad. Not as great as the New Orleans and some other tier 8, you know, ships such as North Carolina, Alabama, and stuff like that. But with defensive fire, it does great. Um, the captain I have currently on here is actually not... It's in the red zone. That's what I call it when I get a new ship and I put the previous captain on it. And I, I don't use doubloons. I don't have enough money to be able to just instantly, essentially... Uh, you know, pay the 500 doubloons to have them already ready for the next ship. So I do the 200k credits, and basically the rest of the thing I just do matches in to be able to get them out of that. And it usually doesn't take long, unless if you have a really, really high tier captain, 19 point captain, 16 point captains, and stuff like that. But it's not really an issue. Um, I have upgraded it, its engine, and I, actually, I believe. Yeah, it's engine it's be and to the B hole, which you know, I have it fully upgraded, except for the guns during this match. I have the twelve second reload guns instead of the ten second reload guns, and the turret traverse is slightly lower than normal. Uh, slower actually. So yeah, uh, and so we make our way here. I launch some torpedoes into B. I know the range doesn't go all the way in, but you know sometimes you can get lucky and they come really close to you you and they detect you I, i've been detected so um i pop speed boost to try to get out of dodge uh all of the caps are being contested by the enemy team and our destroyers are not doing anything so i get a little bit snarky in <laughs> in chat because uh, this cruiser can keep up with the destroyers which is nice but as flamu says in some of his videos the the cruisers on the french line are not well armored enough to be able to push in quickly in the match they need to stay a little bit at long range so I do something here that's a little bit just a little bit um, questionable but it works out in the end I go to a flank that nothing has been spotted in essentially except for a smoke screen and uh, normally sometimes you get unlucky and there's the entire enemy team is right there you know five people shooting at you and you probably die but since RT our team is doing nothing. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll go cap. There's nothing for me to do or shoot at right now. And with my speed boost, you see I do 40 knots. It's not an issue. Um, I do make a mistake later in the match that's really funny to me anyway. And uh, we get detected as a smoke screen fade, which means there's a destroyer there. And, well, he opens fire on something, which is fine. Uh, I, I tried to engage him. The Leningrad is a really slim ship to shoot at, but we get a good salvo, first salvo on him. And then the Bismarck tries to shoot at us. Uh, as you can see, even uh, I'll go over the captain skills I have. I have priority target in my captain's list, but uh, while you're in the red zone of the captain, when you're still training him essentially for your new ship, uh, that skill is entirely disabled, so you can't see if you're being aimed at. I can obviously tell I'm being aimed at because there's things shooting at me, obviously. I'm trying to cap C because we have literally no bases. Uh, I would have hoped this uh, Katsuki could give us a smoke screen so I could keep firing on the Bismarck or we could cap this faster. So uh, I decide to basically conceal up. There was one fire burning. I didn't want to, the Bismarck was firing HE. I didn't want to burn my damage control just because if I get set on fire again, I would have to last the full duration. So I burn my repair when my, I believe, engine gets knocked out. And so I could get disengaged. The concealment on this ship isn't too bad. Uh, obviously my captain's not fully specced right now since it's still there. But uh, I believe it gets down to like 10 kilometers, something like that. 10.2 or something like that, or maybe it's at 11. Um, so it's not too bad. It's not, uh, but this this thing does some great things with its speed. Uh, as you saw when early on everything was firing at me from the B side when as I was traversing, I had my speed boost going. So people underestimate the speed that this thing has. 
by a wide margin. People don't know that it actually does 40 knots, fully, you know, specs and with speed boost, obviously. So I, I also have the, the speed boost module that increases the duration of speed boost. So I have four and a half minutes of duration for the speed boost, which is amazing. It obviously it has a 90 second cooldown, but that means you get a long time during the boost. So we capped C. I refrain from firing during capping because if not I would get fired upon by that Bismarck. But now I'm trying to lay some damage into him. We've done not a lot and it's been more than five minutes already. So this match doesn't seem like a great start, but trust me, it gets much better. Uh, so we make our way to B to try to, you know, hold B off because the entire enemy team went A, B strategy sort of, which is weird. I dodged, I'm trying to dodge some shells from this Bismarck because he kept, he keeps firing a Chi, but I, for some reason I thought he would be a competent player to be firing AP at me, even if he only lands a shell on me. But I guess people are, get frustrated firing at French cruisers and only getting overpins when maybe they should be getting citadels. I know that's the experience for me sometimes. Their space armor is really, really weird. Uh, I believe iChase made a video on them. So I dodged the shells, there was only HE, but you know, it's not a big deal. I keep firing on him, I'm undetected, I'm behind the island, which means there's nothing at, inside the B cap, obviously there isn't, or else it would be contested. Um, so this is some free damage for me, but he's getting out of range, so I need to get in range of something to actually do damage. He, for some reason, didn't burn his repair on two fire, or his damage control on two fires, because we did set him on two fires, which is really strange. I don't believe he had used it before, so I don't know why he let two fires burn, but it's fine some free damage there um, there is a Sean horse moving into our cap in B so we're gonna address him first usually that's what I try to do with my cruisers just address the first thing you see that's gonna threaten something that will help your team that should always be the priority on most ships anyway I'm not going off on a tangent to you know hunt the carrier or something like that we should probably I remain angled towards him and I was thinking of ducking behind the island just in case he saw me but since I don't have priority target I don't know who he's aiming at but his guns weren't pointed in my way that's why I keep zooming in to see where he's going as well as using the torpedo um, to see which direction he's going to be headed and also to potentially try to launch him at him but there's friendlies in the way so I just try not to and he tries he, yeah he does take out our low health friendly there. I switched to AP because even at this range the AP can do pretty good but uh, I'm getting some shatter so uh, we were doing a lot better with the HE but I was just testing it out this is like my second match in her so yep I'm getting shatters and he's angling so I switched to HE I keep trying to determine which way he's gonna go I pop my speed boost and I slow down massively I don't these actually these ships can actually slow down pretty fast if you put full reverse and the ship while reversing under speed boost actually reverses pretty well and is remains pretty maneuverable to be honest so if you get stuck on an island and you have speed boost available on this thing it's actually pretty god darn, you know god darn useful all right so the Sean horse falls to all the enemy friendly fire and fo focus on him and so we move forward I don't know why the enemy is going by one by one into trying to push into here. They should all be trying to rush us. Okay, so he launches torpedoes, and this thing just moves so fast that look at that. Those in some of the cruisers, I would have taken those torpedoes. I wasn't expecting for him to launch torpedoes at me, but he did, and you know, that's good on him. I would have probably taken them had I been in any other ship. But with this thing, I can do, you know, amazing things in terms of torpedo beating. Ha ha ha. You'll see what I mean by that later. <laughs> anyway, um, so we focus on the Bismarck that had been firing HE at us. He's burning again, two fires and no damage control. I don't know if this guy was a bot or he was, you know, he was the guy that got the Bismarck for the hunt for Bismarck and had no prior experience. Um, so... It, it makes no difference to us. We're going to work him down because he's a big issue for us. He's a tier 8 battleship. If he were to do something useful for his team, he would probably, you know, be able to kill us. 
So, um, I try to engage behind the island. The arcs on these shells aren't the fastest, but they're definitely not the slowest. So, they're very, they're between, you know, Japanese and I would say American. I'm trying to use the trick there to see behind an island just to see which angle he's going in. And uh, I, I pressed the M button by accident. I noticed that our lion got killed a couple seconds ago and it was the torpedoes are coming from the north based on you know where he got killed from so i'm turning into that direction to be you know his corpse is right his corpse is right there so i know there's a destroyer north of me and in doing so i open my broadside but it's okay i was able to turn in time and the damage was negligible um there's an algerie who ran aground and you'll get to see here how great this ap is in my first salvo look at this just just pure devastation <laughs> floor citadels oh my gosh it was ridiculous and then we were able to finish him off with the following salvos um, the Algerie is for me it was a very mesh ship so we get we get the torpedo warnings ahead of us and with the speed boost still active for a while you know dodging torpedoes isn't an issue on this ship especially if you're already in you know following your idea of where the de destroyers are those are uh, you know the biggest potential threat for your battleships um, this thing can hunt cruisers downside is it a tier 8 or a tier 9 or tier 10 it does not have radar none of them do which means utility wise they're not that great at pushing into smoke screens and stuff like that they have hydro but their hydro is not the best either it's not german hydro so we find the Ognivoy. I don't know why he didn't go behind the smoke screen instead of going, in f you know, right on the side of it. Uh, I think he was thinking he might be sneaky enough to get away, but he was already on no health. I believe the line had pounded him, you know, down, but he couldn't kill him in time. Or probably the Kiev on the A side. So now I do a full turnaround. The turning radius of this ship isn't too bad. While turning, it it does bleed a lot of speed but it still remains 30 plus knots which is useful enough we've done 80k damage we've killed two ships albeit one of them was pretty low health already uh what was the other ship oh the algerie yes so um the sean horse is trying to push this flank north i don't know why they try to push our spawn there's nothing at spawn that would be useful apart from me but i i'm just gonna try to deter the enemies from pushing. I set another fire on the Sean horse. Thankfully, I'm able to fire under stealth because he's behind the island, but now I am detected. The Sean horse at tier 7 has some of the lowest caliber guns in the game, so angling towards him actually is very viable in a tier 8 cruiser. I think even a tier 7 cruiser is pretty good. So you see no damage. One over pen probably through my superstructure. I switched to AP because AP does a lot of damage. I launch my torpedoes and then I try to see if he's gonna change course, but he doesn't. So he uh, he just keeps going straight. So I don't launch the torpedoes that I had on my port side since I did launch the torpedoes on my starboard side. He launches again, and I I was also trying to bait him into shooting my broadside, but I was angled, so literally no damage. Uh, it's he's probably frustrated right now. I'm I'm just well, too well angled, and I keep doing a ton of damage with my AP. He has you know twice the duration of my of my uh, gun you know cool down the reload speed I'm talking about and okay so he sends torpedoes I don't have speed boost but we're gonna try to shift some mass here <laughs> quickly in succession and you know it's you're able to do it pretty easily I am detected by aircraft I pop my air uh, I pop my repair since he's dead now since I was on fire his secondary set me on fire and I become detected, so not by aircraft anymore. So there's the Leningrad, who we engaged earlier on and moved off of sea. He probably has launched torpedoes, so I try to keep my angle towards that island and not, you know, do anything else. There's his first set. I did recognize this during recording this video, but I have been doing so great with dodging torpedoes. I think I dodged a total of 30 torpedoes in this match. Um, I don't have the it's screen cap of the... Uh, detailed report, but I remember I had 30 torpedo dodges during this entire match We've done 100k damage, so we've done well There's only three enemy ships So I wait thinking that he would launch the torpedoes by now I'm like he's expecting me to go full speed ahead. So 
I slow down. I do have my speed boost just in case. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting and then I, I, I get impatient. I was greedy. That's when you when you, you make mistakes when you get greedy. So yeah, had I waited another second, I think this would have been avoided. I was having some server lag, so I take one torpedo. I would have survived, but I was moving fast enough where the server caught up to me and said that I had caught the other torpedo on the nose of my ship. So we ended up dying, unfortunately. I had hoped to be able to continue to kill the Yugamo and the Leningrad here uh, to help the Amagi, but, you know, such things happen. Our tor uh, so I did launch, I had my aircraft up in the air and that helped spot torpedoes for our Amagi. That kept the Leningrad spotted for a while as well, which is very useful. So, you know, sometimes even in death you can help your team. <laughs> So, now you get to see why I was laughing earlier, but, oh yeah, great torpedo beats, and then I do this at the end, because, you know, pure blood lust. Essentially, I just, I was very, you know, lustful for killing that Leningrad, for some reason. And uh, I was I was so ready and pumped, and then I die. <laughs> it happens to the best of us, it doesn't, you know, I think I did well enough to help the team. We got, what is it, three kills, two kills, three kills, you know, a lot of ribbons up there, seven fires. We did pretty good damage, and even though there's three versus three, we have the health advantage. And we also have the points advantage, because we stopped their pushes into B. And we we stopped, basically, a Sean horse that went there into the B cap, and the Sean horse that was trying to go to our spawn, and we won the match, and that's pretty much the end of it. Here you see, you know, 5,000 XP's. This is the second match I had in her, so I, she's a great ship. I recommend her. So now we're going to get to go through the modules and upgrades that I have for the Charles Martels in New Orleans. Here you see I don't have the gun upgrade yet. So the upgrades I use on the Charles Martel main armaments, I'll, uh, the AA guns mod, the special sp speed boost, uh, steering gears mod 2, and concealment expert. By this time, when I was filming this video, I had my captain already out of the red zone. Thanks to that match, I believe. So, I do have priority target. Direction center for catapult fighter. Adrenaline rush. A demolition expert. And concealment expert. Uh, very useful skills. Uh, direction center, because I don't like to use... I would get expert marksman as well. Direction center, because I don't like to use hydro. I like to use defensive fire, and it helps a lot. So, for the New Orleans... I have it fully upgraded. I have main armaments mod 1, AA guns, damage con 1, steering gears, and basically concealment expert. It's a very basic build. I use defensive fire on my New Orleans, as you saw, and I also use defensive fire on my Charles Martel. So here we are, we're going to see the captain skills for the New Orleans now. I use priority target. I definitely use expert marksman on these because they're slow and demolition expert and concealment. I think after this I would probably get su superintendent. That's what I'm working towards with my third skill point. I still don't have it yet. And that's it. Thanks for watching, everyone.